Central Australia has experienced more loss of mammals through extinctions and declines in recent years than anywhere else in the world. The stories of the central hare wallaby, or Kulawari in the local Walpuri language, and the rufous hare wallaby, or the mala, uh, illustrate the uh, tragedy of loss of these extinctions, but also provide some context for the work that the Australian Wildlife Conservancy is doing here at New Haven to restore the lost biodiversity of Central Australia. The story of Kulawari is um, one of very little information. We only know of this animal because one specimen was collected in the 1930s, just west of New Haven. We, we know that in the 1940s it became extinct in this region and by the 1960s it was gone forever. It wasn't just Kulawari that had become extinct, there was more than 10 other native mammals that had disappeared forever. The lesser bilby, the desert rat kangaroo, the pig footer bandicoot, the list goes on. We also know that the key threats that led to these extinctions were changes in fire regimes as Aboriginal people left their traditional lands and practices behind. This was happening around the same time that the introduced predators, cats and foxes, started to have a larger impact throughout the region. Um, cats in particular have a massive impact on native wildlife. And we know that an individual cat can uh, consume up to five native animals every single night. It's quite possible that the mala was still living here at this time. The mala population, however, was still in serious decline and by the 1980s there was only one small population left on the southern edge of the Tanami Desert, not far north of New Haven. The Northern Territory Government and the local Walpuri community caught the last few remaining mala and they transferred them to safe places where they could continue to persist. But it's worth just noting that the decision to remove these mala from the wild and the actions that the people took at the time absolutely saved that animal from extinction. And it's this work that has now given us hope to be able to restore wild populations of mala um, so that that species doesn't follow in the tragic footsteps of Kulawari, the central hare wallaby. The story of Kulawari and Mala gives some context to the purpose for the project we're running at New Haven now to create a massive predator-free space where these animals can return and thrive in the desert once again. Right now there are numerous Australian mammals such as the Mala that can't survive in the presence of cats and foxes. Uh, their existence is completely reliant on having feral predator free areas in which to live. This is why the construction of feral proof fences like the one here at New Haven is so important. It's the fence that is standing between these animals and extinction. The fence took uh, four months to construct. It um, is 45 kilometres long. It protects nearly 10,000 hectares. 2018 was focused entirely on the eradication of feral animals from within that 10,000 hectares. We've been working closely with a professional trapper, Murray Schofield, and Indigenous rangers Christine Ellis and her mother, Alice Henwood, who have world-class tracking skills. They employed their traditional methods of hunting cats by tracking them down until they could actually capture them and combining this method with the more um, conventional styles of feral animal control meant that throughout the seasons of the whole year we were able to apply a really consistent effort in terms of our feral animal control. We fenced the camels out, we baited numerous populations of rabbits, we caught several foxes and on the 4th of December, we trapped the 46th cat within this area. That was the last cat that we've caught and for the last few months we've been uh, intensively monitoring this area 
for signs of any feral animals and we found none. Up to this point, we've found no evidence at all of any feral animals within this area. So I'm really happy to say now that I'm sitting in the largest feral predator free area on mainland Australia. Having a feral predator free area now enables us to commence the reintroductions of some of these extremely threatened mammals that have left this environment in the recent years. With the reintroduction of marla, uh, followed by red-tailed fasca gales, and then later on golden bandicoot, the burrowing bedong, brush-tailed bedong, numbat, and other uh, nationally threatened species. It's not only these animals that benefit from this space, it's also the uh, animals that have continued to survive here, but in very contracted populations like the black-footed rock wallaby, the brush-tailed mulgara, and the great desert skink. In late 2017, the Australian Wildlife Conservancy was approached by the Northern Territory Government with a request to take on the management of a small population of marla. We constructed a 150 hectare predator-free area and translocated those animals to New Haven. And um, they've settled in really nicely over the last 12 months. The population's increasing. It's been supplemented with animals that we've brought up from Scotia Sanctuary. And uh, the Marla at New Haven now have um, really made the place their home. The staff and the directors and the supporters of AWC really feel the weight of these recent losses and declines. We see the ghosts of these animals walking in the landscapes that we love and we'll do as much as we can while we can to prevent these losses from occurring again.